defense is going to be really interesting this year. They have a new defensive coordinator, of course, D'Amico Ryans, right, who's going to add a completely different element that we don't even know what it's going to look like at this point, right? I think we have some ideas. But for you, when you're looking at this team, this pass rush, you know, they, they have Nick Bosa, of course, and I think people, they have certain expectations for him. They have an idea of how he's going to play. And we'll see how that p- pans out this year. But that second pass rush is going to be really important this year. So who, who do you think – beyond Nick Bosa, who is going to make a huge impact in the pass rush. Well, I'm going to say this, that even with Nick Bosa coming back, I think the most important um, person that's going to have an impact on the pass rush is actually going to be Samson and Ebicon. Uh even, even more so than Nick Bosa. And the reason I say it is because of what he does in terms of the other guys on the line of scrimmage. Because by, by having him, if he can be that D forward role where he's out there in that pass situation on a regular basis, being able to kick Eric Armstead down to defensive tackle, that's going to be huge for Armstead's product productivity. And, and, you know, I think you're going to get a few sacks out of Ebicom as well. I mean, Ford didn't have a lot of production uh, in 2019. I think he had five or six sacks, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think at Ebicom could kind of match that. But where the Niners really fell off last year was Armstead, you know, was I think a double digit sack guy in 2010. And he was down to three, three and a half last year. So if they can get his productivity up, get get um, Bosa back and let Bosa get his eight sacks or five, you know, five to eight sacks, whatever it is, you, you, you start putting that all together and all of a sudden you've got a much better defensive line as a whole. But it really starts with Ebicom because you've got to get those, you've got to get Armstead's numbers up. Those other two guys, I think, you know, that you've got to get that pressure from the inside and you've got that guy's got to be able to finish. And I think by Ben, him playing inside on a regular basis, you're going to see that. And I think that kind of goes hand in hand with what I was going to say, which was, I think D'Amico Ryans to me, he, he's going to be the biggest influence, I think, on the pass rush this year with all, with all the different things he's talked about. It seems like they're going to do more exotic looks than, than what Robert Solo was willing to do and did end up doing with this team. So we're going to see safeties. We're going to see corners. We're going to see linebackers more involved with the pass rush. So I think when you add all that together, a guy like Samson Ebucom is going to be perfect. It's, it's a compliment, all those things, because like you said, he, he, he I think in the last two seasons, he, he recorded five sacks. But even then, he was had so much success when – he was against mobile quarterbacks in the Kyler Murrays of the world, with Russell Wilson. So that's an aspect that this team hasn't had and that they've really struggled with on defense. I mean, year in, year out in, in this division. So when you add that as- aspect to this defense, it's going to it's gonna just add something that they didn't have before. And I think while, you know, the pass rush might not be as great and the defensive line won't be what it was in 2019 because – you're obviously, you know, losing to Forrest Buckner. There's all the, the all, all the differences. I think what the 49ers are going to have is a great rotation of guys. Like, I want to bring this comment up. Harvey mentioned it, Arden Key. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of depth, I think, on this defensive line this year. And I think what's great with the 49ers, the depth in specific, is that they have guys who can do all different types of things. So so when they have specific mm-hmm. matchups, right, they can use Samson and Ebucom for Kyler Murray. But when, when they might be playing a more statue-type quarterback or a Tom Brady, right, that type of guy, you can put him at edge rusher and, and let him do those things. So I think it's going to be really – um, interesting to see how D'Amico deploys the defense this year and, and just how he a- attacks the pass rush in specific because it's something that's I don't think it's going to be very similar from what we've seen in the 49ers. And I think there will be some, you know, Robert Sala aspects, but but I think this defensive line in specific and the way they rush the passer, it's going to look significantly different this year, I think. Yeah, I think you really saw a big transition from Sala in 2019, 2020, right, with with that pass rush not being there, not being able to get home with four guys, and so they had to get a little bit more creative, and I think you're going to see Ryan's kind of, everything kind of points to him picking right up from that aspect and kind of trying to carry that on a little bit further. So I'm, I'm really excited to watch this defense up front and see how they get after teams, because if, those, if they can start getting after guys up front, it's going to make the guys on the back end um, look a lot better, too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the pass rush just in general, seeing how Javon Kinlaw is able to impact it, and he's not going to be a sack artist necessarily, but he's a guy who create, he creates the right kind of pressure. He keeps quarterbacks contained within the pocket. This this defense could eat this year. I, I think they really have the type of personnel to where um, they could have an elite of the elite defense. Um, but at the same time, I mean, we see all the injuries with this team. I mean, Nick Bosa, I don't think it's it, – it, it, we don't – I mean, I don't have – specific expectations for him this year because I, I don't think we should really have any 
I, I think, you know, it, it even just, but, but like going back to what I was saying, if you look up and down that depth on the defensive line specifically, they're going to be able yep. to do, do, do so many exotic and, and different types of things. Like you're saying that Robert Sala was doing at the end of last season. So I think this team, it, it, this is going to be the most interesting part to me on the defense, how, how they create pressure artificially specifically because the, because when, when D'Amico was talking, the thing I hung on to the most is that he expects his, his secondary and his corners to play more base, you know, play, play more basic of a defense so that he he can put less on their plate and allow the pass rush to, to confuse defenses and do different types of things in that way. Um, but I, just yeah. real quick, is there anything else you wanted to add on, on the end of this topic? I was just going to throw in there. You, you kind of mentioned Kinlaw, and that's 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 you know that group inside. We, we're talking about mostly the outside rushers. We're even talking about you know bringing Armstead inside. But when you look at their base defense, and you've got uh, Kinlaw, DJ Jones, and Kevin Kevin uh, Gibbons, those are three guys that are really good. Could become really good in, interior pass rushers because we've already seen Jones be able to do it. We've seen uh, we've seen. Uh, Givens be able to, to rush the passer well from inside. And, and, and Kinlaw just like needs my, to get a couple more moves. Like my guy Barry Ball is saying, I mean, Arden Key, I think you look up and down this 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 defensive line roster or the step, you know, you could see guys having a few sacks here, a few sacks there, and it's going to be more situational, I think, this year more than anything to where, you know, they can have guys for specific, like I said, matchups. I think that's the biggest thing in the NFL now is just finding your matchups, right? So, so – this defensive line in specific, they're going to be so multiple in the ways that they can do that against different types of teams. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be a lot of fun watching them uh, get after the quarterback this year. It's going to be a blast, absolutely. Um, real quick, I just want to bring up one of these comments that I was looking at. Okay, um, Kerry Hyder. Uh, so, you know, I think in terms of who is this season's Kerry Hyder, I don't think there's a specific guy that I'm looking at, uh, but I think it'll be multiple guys. I think Arden Key is a guy Barry, Bay Area Baller mentioned, um, but even mm -hmm. like the, the DJ Jones, the, or the Kevin Givens, all, all these different types of guys, I think they'll have their moments throughout the season to where I don't think it'll be one guy more that guys will have their own games, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that, well, I think if you're, if you're looking at it just based off of like the Kerry Hyder role, you know, as the backup of the kind of, contributes and is big type contributor, that's your Arden Key type of a player, right? Arden Key is probably going to be most likely to be that guy uh, because he's he's going to be – Arden Key is going to be filling that role of, of Kerry Hyder or the year before, uh, the guy that just got signed by the Jets who was doing really well, you know, in oh 2019, yeah. Blair. Blair was always Blair, – Blair was a – Ronald Blair was a really good backup pass rusher. He, he put a lot of pressure on the quarterback – for when for the times that he for the snaps that he was given, you know, so there wasn't a big drop off when he went in the game. So that's what I think they're hoping out of. So my guess would be Arden Key would be the one that might be the the surprise contributor. Yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely a guy who could be a, a surprise sort of contributor. Um, 